good start, a little bit, a little bit backwards from the demo script, and because it needs time to download the embeddings from OpenAI. So I'll just start it. You'll see that it works, and while it's doing that, we can uh, do the presentation. Could you tell about the script that? Uh, yeah, I thought we'll do the presentation. This is the script, I can explain it, but maybe later. So it'll just need time to. Okay, so um, I'm not going to go into uh, technical details of how these vectors actually work. I'll just give a user overview. So as a user of MariaDB vector, you can understand uh, what you're doing. So before we uh, dive into uh, vector embeddings themselves, there's a lot of confusion in between. Especially if you read online, people cannot tell the difference between an embedding model and a generative model. So ChatGPT, the one that you're probably most familiar with, given the latest AI craze, that is a generative model. You give it a prompt, and it's trained to suggest, to predict the correct set of words according to that problem. That is uh, what it's good at. There are other models also uh, published by OpenAI that uh, are an embedding model. They have the purpose of taking in input and generating a vector embedding for, for that input. So now what is a vector embedding? Well, a vector embedding is basically a list of numbers. Uh, these numbers effectively code the features of the uh, input as you send it to the model. The input can be of multiple formats. It can be text, it can be image, it can be video. The model is the black box. Uh, this is trained on lots of data, either text or image or video. And it learns how to group based off uh, its training data where this input should map to a uh, vector. So for, for this text, we might get a number like that, a set of numbers like that, and so on for the other types. Uh, a model uh, need not necessarily be able to ingest all of these types of um, mediums, but usually the one we mostly work with is text here. Sorry? If the vectors are similar, then... Okay, yeah, and uh, uh, the way you can think about it is if these numbers are similar, then that means that the input was also similar. That is the key point here. I'm not going to define exactly what the distance between those vectors are, just whatever intuitively for you makes sense to be similar, uh, go with that. And now, why this big vector search craze with databases? Well, uh, this is one use case. Uh, it's a pretty common one on the internet. You have, let's say, a web store, you have a backend server, and traditionally you have a database. But now this model comes in. So what do you do now? Uh, let's say you just want to implement a very good product search for users. Now the user searches for the product, they type in, I don't know, I want, I want the best laptop I can get. And it can, it can even be in those kinds of words. You, you take that query and you give it to the AI model. The AI model will return a set of numbers, the embed. Then you run an SQL query on the database. The SQL query will look something like this. So from the products you have available, you get the name and the description, and you order those vectors by the embedding that you got from here, plus uh, there is an embedding column in the table. This embedding column is, um, well, it, it, you have to insert it alongside your other data. To generate the embedding, you basically pass in to the model, this description, and then you get uh, the embedding vector. The database then will return uh, a set of results. Notice we put limit data here. Uh, so basically, we, are, we want the uh, closest 10 elements to this. 
And then finally, we can then recommend the user those 10 closest uh, products matching his query. Any questions so far? So how do you generate the embedding that is stored in MariaDB? Because product name will not be matching anything that the user right. um, You mean the data in this column? You can generate the data in this column by concatenating this and this, running the concatenation of this through the model, and then doing an insert of this, this, and the result of the model. The, 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 it could only the description could be only Lenovo and the number. Yeah. And if, uh, if they use a search for desk desktop, that is not kind of corresponding. And that, that is why it's garbage in, garbage out. If you give the model not enough information, it can't do a more relevant embedding here. But usually, web store has a pretty good description for everything that is on the web store. Thank you. Um, other applications, like we can have Q&A systems, and this is what Sergey will be de demoing. But another one that's, um, I think this is where the confusion starts when people talk about generative AI. Um, because you can use vector search to augment what you pass to what is now most popular is ChatGPT in order to get a better response. So the, the key thing is that ChatGPT can't handle um, with the latest releases, quite a lot of context. And when uh, when the model can accept a lot of context, you want to like, encourage it to respond correctly. So you give it as much information as possible from your domain. So what you do, uh, let's say the, uh, the user query is, uh, give me the best optimization strategies in ADB, you would uh, let's say you also crawled our knowledge base. You would search for the 10 most relevant documents in the knowledge base, pass that to ChatGPT as a form of text, and then you write the prompt to ChatGPT like this, using only the following information, blah, 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 all the things in the knowledge base, answer the following question. And then you put the, the user question here. So this is a way to guide the model to give you a more appropriate response. Make sense? Now, as a database user, basically, what, what do you have to do to get this to work? Well, right now, right this moment, you have to install a vector database. And unfortunately, right now, we don't have MariaDB vector, but it's coming soon. You will need to get yourself an embedding model. There are open source models. Uh, compared to OpenAI's version, they're not yet there, but they're getting pretty good. Or you can set up a cloud-hosted model, which is what Sergey did when running the script. He's querying OpenAI to generate those embeddings. And then finally, when you you have to change your application, uh, as I said, in uh, when you insert data into the database, if you have the embedding column, you have to generate the embedding as a part of the insert. And finally, when you want to search, you'll use back distance and get the nearest numbers. Now, the, the key word here is that these are not exactly the, the guaranteed nearest neighbors, but an approximate. The, prob the reason for this is that searching for vectors in a database is expensive. And we have indexing strategies, but they're not guaranteed to be exact. These indexing strategies give you an approximation. So what is the likely best result, but it's like trading uh, time for accuracy. And then, and then, depending on the data set, there are different algorithms that perform better or worse. For example, IPF flat um, takes less resources, but then performs poorly when it comes to actually giving you the right results. Um, hierarchical navigable small worlds is the de facto standard. It's what most of the vector databases, PG vector, and others implement. Uh, the problem is it has a large memory footprint, but it gives you like, some of the best results that you get currently with the state of the art. For most data sets that are not artificially constructed, uh, this one is pretty bad for uh, artificial data sets, but it works very well in practice. Um, 
Like we will get more to back up and running, but and after we uh, release the first version, there's multiple areas we can explore. Um, getting making it easier for users to add embeddings into the database by plugging uh, anyone could write this. Uh, we could uh, have a dedicated storage engine or maybe leverage connect to get the embeddings from an external endpoint. Uh, there are multiple different indexing algorithms. Uh, maybe we can try it all depends on the workload. And of course, we can do performance optimizations that no other database has. One thing we discussed with Sergey is that MariaDB is capable of pushing conditions through the index. Uh, this is something that we will be exploring in the future. Okay, then if you have any questions for me, otherwise, uh, Sergey, we can start with the demo. Is it easy to answer the question? <coughs> One question. Go back a couple of pages. To, to the uh, table in the There. So uh, I would assume that a very common query would be also, I say that uh, you also add it to the aware clause where product category is, for example, computers. How will that affect the vector distance? Because uh, if you just scan it, there is no problem. But for index, that may become a problem. Uh, that is where index condition first out would, uh, would uh, apply. Once the, like, uh, right now, if you have a weird clause here, then you're kind of stuck. You have to, go, uh, you have to first get the ones that match, and then uh, just find the closest ones by scanning. That's basically, so, uh, if you don't the index, is that is a scan. Yeah. yeah. So then it will work. But it will work, but it will still be a scan. Yeah, yeah, Even yeah. if you have the index, you will get the, the bad performance time-wise. Do you mean that the, as soon as it's aware, kind of people do a scan? Uh, as soon as there is a where on the table that has the embedding, it actually gets scan. Yeah. And that's the, that is the limitation also in PG Vector right now. I think the first step will be reasonably easy to predict the, well, estimate the selectivity of the workloads and just increase the limit accordingly. Yeah. Later we can do what we've done. Okay. Um, 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 okay. 1500, uh, 1500 floors, let's say. That's 1500 times 4, 3, uh, 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, but it's one of the largest, usually it's less like, like yeah, 5, 700, that's 2, 3 times less. <laughs> Well, if you have no more questions, we can go to the demo. So, yeah, this is this finished. And, uh, sorry? Yeah, so I can, uh, I can quickly show this. Try to make the characters bigger because back there they will not be able to read. Uh, I don't. I don't think I can. So I can just. Uh, Sorry, control plus. I don't think control plus works in here. In console it works. Okay. Not in mine. <laughs> uh, in it's not a console. Anyway, the <coughs> So uh, that's. So this screen with both searches and populates the database. It basically creates the database and search uh, all the data from the MySQL help table. And then for all the embeddings which are now, you want to take and run the script many times and then you'll just continue working. So it queries open AI embedding inside to generate the embedding. 
then in later ways to in England and, and, and well, Griffith Center where everything is done, which is what you have seen in the in the experiment that I have shown earlier uh, in this one. So this is always and for search it again it gets the query from the command line, queries the embedding from the open AI API, then Exactly the same what we can do with select from PD, order by decker distance embedding and the query limit one. So it gets one best match. And it works. So what was the data you inserted? From the uh, uh, help people? Yeah, from the help people. Uh, this one, let's go. Okay, okay, is that help? Okay. Yeah. So it's not all my space. It doesn't have lots of examples and recipes, so it's more like specific help. So that limits of what you can actually ask. But uh, for example, what if I put the right breakdown in it to work? Edge, not. Okay. Like I don't know you. Uh, how to use okay, so data. Shares. Yeah. Oh. I will just click on it. Sorry. Yeah. And it just so this is because of commentator expression and the recursive. This is uh, an example of uh, bus scheduler, which is exactly you know, the recursive data structure and so on. So this is that's what it shows. Or I can do, I don't know. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Introduction into Windows functions. That's how it works. Trying to do something kind of fine. Problems with it doesn't turn out turn the what this row ID, which is uh, uh, the best we find. It's not that it's not that even a row ID filter. If I'll do a row ID filter in them, this will turn the row into the row and then might no it's too long. Oh. Now it should be pretty resilient to typos as well. Let's try it. Uh, so I didn't make a typo. Oh, if. Oh, that's wrong. That's the wrong data type. Oh, damage can never do. So is something irrelevant? Yeah, there was. What did right. you do? Can't spawn new bases. What? Can't. All your bases belong to us. Okay. I don't know why to join this. You need to ask uh, well, it's, it's base, which is supposed to data base. You need to ask artificial <laughs> intelligence. <laughs> oh, for example, one of the ways I did how oh, to okay. secure. It returns changes to the authentication system and the authentication process. That the from turn four, which is not exactly a recipe because um, help tables don't have recipes, they're only in the full knowledge base. But it's still reasonably relevant. Authentication in my decided from turn four. And then I didn't use the word authentication, I asked how to secure a Mary David. So it's more less. Why, uh, what is error 13? Which is what? Error 13. There is no error in the head. So that's bad. 
me tomorrow. You could try it. I'm doing travel. Yes. I just have to speed up. <laughs> <laughs> not, not a perfect answer, but it doesn't have a test. The answer is normal. Fair enough. Question. Yeah. How did you, how did you hit some problems? Should I get on the iPad screen? Yeah. You have a font. You mean that font doesn't do anything there? It does, but I think it's the last, <laughs> the last option. It's the largest. I don't have a larger one. Ah, you, we can learn to say it's not as good. Well, okay. it's, this, this terminus font, it's rather... Uh, okay. okay, that's good. <laughs> so, so, here's the embedding. Yeah. So, this is the table structure. It's, uh, I wrote it to be elephant, and so it's more, more complex than necessary because it's supposed to do nothing if from the return. So this is a create table, ID, this is the help text, this is embedding. Uh, uh, here I insert everything from the knowledge base, insert it now for the people do it many times. Is that, is that, is now for embedding, and then select everything where embeddings are now. And then, yeah. This slide here is the magic I get to do. Yeah. Here I get the embedding from the open eye. Okay, but this can be, you can run a local model instead. You don't have to go to the internet. It's just that. This is from the open eye help out later different models. And I copied this one from some other example. Uh, and what does A dot do? Huh? It's the name of the model. It's the name of the model. So this, and then the update the oops, update the knowledge base, update the table, KB table, inserting embedding. Well, updating. And this is the search. So exactly the same. So I use OpenAI embedding API to get the embedding for the query. And query query is just everything on the command line. And then I select from the AB order by distance. Just like exactly like which I had in his slides, limit one because I only want to return. It's not a lot of code for pretty good search. <laughs> well, on top of the code is error handling and stuff. So let's go actually it does something. This is Chat GPT wrote it? <laughs> no. It will probably write it pretty well on the address code. It's my job. Next time I need an example, I'll probably check it. Yeah. Okay. Right. How do you know which embedding to choose? Uh, which model here? Yeah. Uh, you read the documentation. It says, for some, it says that it's the uh, certain things versus others. Some embeddings are, uh, you can run locally. To, to get, you can run the model locally to generate stuff, but it's not as, it's not as good to, uh, when it comes to searching. Yeah. Uh, when can we kick the tires and take it out ourselves and in which version? Uh, I'll answer the answer that one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's still some work to do on the indexing. Sometimes it would work on much larger large data set than the help tables. Let's guess, like, um, I can actually do We could publish a YouTube for this. Just this function, then we. Yeah, this function, sure. So, yeah, but this vector distance function doesn't de depend on the model. No, no, it doesn't depend on the model. It's a normal Euclidean distance, just. Okay, so it's a totally independent of the model. Okay? Yeah, it's independent of the model. But the arguments need to have been generated by the same model. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there are different ways to define the distance. Postgres supports three of them in the recent 
or uh, you know, they will have five different distances metrics described. This is this one is the most common, the Euclidean one, but later we will probably have more if but the way it is just elastic then they definitely will. Can I take the function like a shared object, put it on uh, the server and there is no indexing support that will work? Can it work? Yeah, it doesn't that's why you can just do it in Euclidean distance between two metrics. Do you have the code? Mm -hmm. Do you have the code that I can build the shared by? Like uh, well, I have the code, but it's not UDF, it's inside the server, I never uh, try. Well, it's not UDF. No, you can extract it and turn it into UDF, but I don't think it makes a lot of sense. Okay, uh, can you return the distance itself to show how relevant it is? Uh, yes, but I don't think that distance is, has any specific meaning, so it doesn't actually show you how... Well, one thing I try to do that is uh, to see the... Well, if I can do a larger form, yeah. I mean, when you ask questions and it gives you some result, can you show it? If this is very accurate, this is completely bullshit. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. I can do that. I just, as I said, I don't think this number means anything. So I don't, like Moti was saying, uh, they, they go they less than you know, 0 0.5. I don't think 0 0.5 or 0 0.1 or any number has any intrinsic meaning. So it, you cannot say that this number is good and this number is bad. But relatively, you can compare them. Yeah, you can compare them. Uh, sure. Distance doesn't matter, so it will be the, the last decimal. <laughs> yeah, for example, if, you, if I ask something and distance is so low, then I can say I cannot give you an answer. But there, there, you know, everything is zero one, Mr. Gamma. And it may be that zero one is yeah. zero one yeah. is zero close. Yeah. So yeah. Whatever. So what is this? Yes. Yeah. 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 I ask the same thing. But then the answer on the screen. Hmm? Yeah. No, this is just the largest distance uh, in any two documents. In that so the mechanism is similar to the zero. Gives you a number. Zero eight. Eight. Zero eight. Okay. Well, it's uh, open AI and all vectors are normalized, so you cannot have nothing larger than one. Oh, de de definitely one? No, you can have larger than one. It's a 1500 dimensional space. Oh. So it will be zero 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 if they do, if they have zero one, one, one here and one here, yeah, that's really different. Okay. Do you think correctly this this way of moving is not CPU and non CPU because it's a just memory indexing? This currently it's 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 with the those kind. Yeah, this is this is full table scan because the table it's like yeah, as I said, eight hundred eight hundred rows. So you can also can you return multiple results? Like use the limit? Sure, sure. I, I have this limit here I have uh, limit one. And then I here I have limit one and then I do it with the pager. I can do print, you know. So that it wouldn't wait. And uh, giving it, I don't know, five, whatever. Then we'll do what you might expect. Um, so I shouldn't use the paper. Something 
I don't think I ever opened this one. Maybe we can just pop it now. I was getting that one. Sure. This sounds like a DNS problem. I was getting this kind of thing. Can it connect and then it'll fail? Can it resolve the address or something? It's always best, better to blame the internet than the server. Yes. Yeah, so, so, <laughs> yeah, connection timeout, it can't read, can read the data. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this is, this were five best results. Optimizing me. Oh, no, sorry, it's not five. Just still to block the one. Which one? Uh, yeah. 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 Example number one, I guess directly after your URL, that's the next, next page. I don't know what's example number one in the launch base. Then it goes to, yeah, it was analyzed for my JSON example. Then it goes to another example, quick reference of commonly used queries to make it be interesting. And then there was something else. Yeah, flash query cache for some reason. Oh, and useful made queries. Yeah, so it returns for the four results here. So it's still in the same way we can kick kick the tires and so in the on the so I, 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 after the index will be uh, working yeah. and but which version? Oh. Maybe maybe the LPS, LPS version. Which one? Eleven. Eleven seven. Okay, but it could be even 11.4 or 11.5? Not, not in 11.4. 11.4 is basically already out. Okay. Uh, well, it's not out, but it's pretty much done. 11.5, maybe. Yeah, I hope so. So we've done, I mean, you, you have the health pass, we've done, instead of the foundation, we've done it with the entire knowledge base. Uh, of course, not yet storing it in, in the deck, but we stored it in, in separate uh, pickle files and, and a small laptop. Encoding it took 18 hours, uh, and we had a whole lot of two more down there for uh, on the CPU. Local, locally, yeah, okay. Oh, no, no GPU at all. Okay. Oh, thank you, everyone. So,